Yoav, can you go back some 4,000 years to give us some historical context to the conflict between Israel and Palestine? You cannot really understand this um, conflict without understanding the origins of it, which are ancient. So if I'm opening even the book of Genesis, the story of Abraham um, that was commanded to take his uh, beloved son Isaac to a mount called Mount Moriah. And over there he had to find a big white rock. And on that rock he had to bind his son and to sacrifice his son in order to show to God that you know he's willing to go all the way. That rock, according to belief, of course, is still in Jerusalem. Today is underneath a very important mosque. Um, but Jews are obsessed with that rock. They call it the foundation stone. They believe the entire universe was founded from that big right rock. It's a limestone rock. It's a natural rock. It's a bedrock. Um, and this is the binding of Isaac, meaning this is the big bang of Judaism, of uh, monotheism in many, many ways. And if you will open the Bible, Old Testament Bible, you will read that the Jews would later on build their temple, the first and second temple. And I do not mean synagogues, like sometimes in the state they, they call synagogues a, a temple. I'm talking about one JCC to hold them on, one Jewish center. And if you go to the Holy of Holies of that Jewish temple, you will find the Ten Commandments, you will find the Ark of the Covenant, but mainly you will find that big white rock, the foundation stone. The first temple will be destroyed at the 6th century BCE by the Babylonian, and the first Jewish exile will follow it. But Jews will come back, do the impossible, and will return um, to Zion, to their homeland, to their forefatherland, and they will build a second temple exactly where the first one was. And that second temple, if you'll go to the Holy of Holies of that second temple, you will find that big white rock, that foundation stone, meaning this is the really the big bang of Judaism, the cradle of Judaism. That's how our story um, starts. The second temple will be destroyed by the Roman at 70 AD, meaning we're like fast forwarding a thousand years. If, if, if the binding of Isaac is almost 4,000 years ago, and then the first temple will be built by King Solomon 3,000 years ago, and now 1,000 years later, the end of the second Jewish temple, no more Jewish temple. Roman are taking over, later on there will become Christian, and then we have all the whole Jesus story. Jesus was crucified, was resurrected from all the events in the New Testament happened in uh, what is now considered Israel, Palestine, and for a few hundred years Christianity um, have Jerusalem as the center of the world, but I will fast forward. 1400 years ago, if you open the Quran, the holy text for Islam, or the Hadith, another holy inscription of Islam, you will read about a fascinating night journey. Muhammad, a new prophet, was arrived in, in Mecca. And he, Islam is already happening, but they don't know exactly how many prayers a day should they pray, and you know what's the verse of the prayer, and, and this is very vague. And then you will, read, you will read about a fascinating night journey, Muhammad flying on a magnificent creature, El Burak, all the way from Mecca to Al-Aqsa, believed to be Jerusalem. He will land over there, he will tie his, uh, uh, his creature, and he will ascend from the exact right, this white rock. Again, no more Jewish temple in the last 600 years. Muhammad will ascend to heaven. He will cross seven floors with the seven most important VIPs of humanity until he will meet God. And after a long and very Middle Eastern debate, um, he will get the number of prayers, five prayers. It starts with 50, it will end with five. And over there, Muhammad will pray for the first time towards Mecca on that white rock with angel Gabriel on one side and with his forefather, Abraham, on the other side. Don't know if you know that Abraham had two sons, Isaac, which is believed to be the, fa the father of Judaism, and Ishmael, or Ismail, which is believed by Muslim to be the forefather of Islam. And ever since then, that big white rock, which I now can call um, Kubat as sahara uh, in Arabic, it's part of the compound called Haram al-Sharif, you can call it also Al-Aqsa. Ever since then, that right rock is the third holiest site for Islam after Mecca and Medina. Meaning, I do believe that this conflict that we're talking about is mostly a national conflict, a conflict between two groups of people, two nations fighting over a New Jersey-sized um, territory. But it does have a religious aspect that you cannot ignore. Some people will beg to differ. They will believe it's, it's just a religious uh, war. I am not 
one of those, but it definitely has some religious war. 70 years after the destruction of the Second Temple by the Romans, there is another failed rebellion of Jews against Roman. And when the Romans are crushing this rebellion, they decide to wipe out every Jewish existence of that area, and they will change the name of the whole province. The name was Provincia Judea, the province of the Jews, and they will name it, and according to the nemesis, to the ancient enemies of the Israelites in, in the Old Testament, and they will name it Provincia Palestina, according to the Philistine that fought against David back in the Old Testament time. I'm not talking that there, there is no connection that we know of, of the ancient Philistine to Palestinian today, but ever since then, the name catched for most times. Yeah. Jeff, sorry. Okay, so that, that's helpful to actually understand the, the provenance of the name itself. And, I, you know, I, I want to underscore just the, uh, the concentration of the geography that, that you just outlined. So when I uh, visited Israel and I was walking through East Jerusalem and the Old City, and then you come upon the Wailing Wall, right? And so this is a place where, where Jews still go to pray. And then, if I remember correctly... Just above the Wailing Wall, there's essentially like the plaza and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, I believe. And it's now the Wailing Wall, if I understand correctly, is a remnant or a vestige, right, of the second temple that was destroyed by the Romans. Is that is that right? More or less? Uh, partially right. The, the, the Western Wall, the Western Wall is one of the four retaining walls that King Herod, that renovated the Second Temple, built in order to create a platform, a, 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 really a platform, a, a temple mount, uh, big enough to hold his magnificent renovated Second Temple. The temple is, itself, we don't have evidence over there. The Western Wall is the retaining wall that is the closest you can get as a Jew to the big white rock that I mentioned, um, because in the last 1400 years until recently, most of the time, it was a Muslim sovereignty over that land, and Muslims allowed Jews to come and pray in Jerusalem, but um, did not allow them to go back to the White Rock. That's theirs uh, in the last almost um, 1,400 years straight. I will mention one time that it was not. Yes, the Western Wall is a, is a man's made replacement to, the, to that big White Rock um, that Jews made, and for now, for vast majority of Jewish people who in the world, it's so energetically charged, they would actually pray in the Western Wall and not in the White Rock. The White Rock is not under our... Uh, we're not allowed, Jews are not allowed even today to pray in Al-Aqsa compound, in Al-Aqsa mosque. So yes, it's, a, it's mm -hmm. a replacement in a way. Got it. Understood. Thank you for that clarification. And then the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is essentially down the block, <laughs> ostensibly. Down the block. Yeah. On the, the last seven days of Jesus' mortal life, up and down Mount of Olives, um, doing all, you know, crying for the first time, seeing Jerusalem for the first time, praying, debating with the rabbi, um, being, being hunted down. Everything happened in Jerusalem, and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the holiest site for the Christian world, where Jesus, on a, on a Good Friday, where Jesus was crucified, buried and after three days sunday he was resurrected but um yeah it's it's down the block it's not the same white rock it's another white hill but yeah it's also happening in the same square mile not even square mile yeah i mean the common theme here seems to be that this is a place where the celestial heavens meet the terrestrial earth right i mean for almost all of the the abrahamic religions um, and this is why one of the reasons why there is so much uh, kind of energetic underpinning uh, uh, to it's, Jerusalem. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's energetically charged in a way, and geopolitical charged due to that. And in in ways I cannot really. You have to come and and you know you have to come and tour with me. But it's 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 an endless city. And you know my my poet once said. No one has ever seen Jerusalem naked, not even the archaeologists. Jerusalem never gets completely undressed, but always puts on new houses over the shabby and broken one. It's a layer cake of civilization and energy that goes mm. endlessly. It's mm. mm. a beautiful um, image. Okay, <laughs> so let's see. So you, you touched on the Roman period. I know that there's many other um, periods that we could hover over, the Byzantine era and the Crusades and all this. I, I leave it to you to uh, to navigate the, the timeline here. <laughs> yeah, look, we could do a lecture of two hours on each and every period. That's e easy. 
But if I want to, you know, keep my eyes on the prize, on the main story, I have to, I have to again, jump ahead. We did talk about the origin of the name Palestina or Palestine. If I will be really accurate, it's the Greek used that even in the 5th century BCE. But the way we the way we use it today starts from the second century AD, once the Roman tried to wipe out the Jewish existence and put the name Palestine, uh, Palestina, naming the Philistines an ancient ethnicity that were the, 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 the nemesis, the bitter enemy of, of the Israelites back in David, King David's time and, and so on. I do want to touch about the Crusader just briefly. You can, you know, you will edit it out if needed. <laughs> but I think it's important because the la- the, I, I mentioned that Muslims are sovereign for almost 1400 years straight, with one exception. Around 800 years ago, the Crusader, European Christians are going on crusade to save the Holy Land from the Muslims that took it. And they will manage for almost 200 years to conquer the Holy Land. And the one thing, the one of the first things they'll do, the Templars Knights will climb to that El Aqsa Mosque, to that golden dome that covers the big white rock till today. And they will take the symbol of the Muslim, the croissant, the, 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 the moon. They will take it down and they will put a cross. They will massacre all Jews and Muslims and they will do other, <laughs> other things. It's like ancient ISIS. But for what is important for our story is that they will convert the mosque into a church. This is such a trauma in the collective mindset of the Muslims, the local Muslims, that when Salah Hadin, a, a Muslim emperor, will kick those crusaders back to Europe, the one first thing he will do, he will, he will look at the demography and he will say, well, there is too many Christians around here, local Christians, not your blue-eyed, blonde Christians from you know, Europe, the local Middle Eastern Christians. And he will invite communities, from Muslim communities from all over the world to come and settle in Jerusalem. And he will even invent all kinds of pilgrimage sites to make sure that at any given moment, especially in the high, on the high holidays of the Christians, there will be a Muslim majority and a Muslim pilgrimage towards the coastline to always have eyes on the west, eyes on the coastline, making sure mm. that those crusaders are not coming back. Why am I mentioning that so much? It doesn't matter if the Palesti- of my Palestinian colleagues are here for 100 years or, or for 800 years. In the collective DNA of the local Palestinians, of the local Muslim that I call Palestinian, ever since that trauma their their mission is to be the guardian angels of the holy site in the holy land mainly al-aqsa mosque this big white rock and hebron there the, where the graves of the patriarch of, and matriarch of monotheism are buried abraham isaac jacob um sarah rebecca Leah, and so on this is super important to understand even later how come al-aqsa this white rock is always playing a crucial um, part when we talk about the conflict, okay? Mm. Yeah, and, and and also helpful to um, uh, cement some of these religious terms. I mean, w- later we have the Abraham Accords, very recently, and we have the Al Aqsa Brigades. Like these these names for things have ancient roots. So I think you're you know you're doing a wonderful job laying the groundwork for, for some of these things. Hey. Thanks for watching. If you like this interview from the Commune Podcast, then click subscribe and check out this video right here.